All right, so okay. on today's week crypto meetup, we ha we hosting a very special guest uh, who's from the Cardano community, which is Duncan Kurtz. Yeah, is it right? Yeah, and um, tell us a little bit about your role in the Cardano community and about the whole concept of Cardano. What you aiming at and what's your what's your goal? So my role in Cardano is that uh, I'm the head of engineering for for Cardano. So that means that I'm involved in all of the technical details, mm -hmm. um, and I really don't get involved in like you know the marketing or the or, or the yeah. or the long-term picture so much. It's really the the kind of day-to-day. -day, how do we translate you know the ideas from research? So programming um, and uh, programming, but also design IT stuff. Mm -hmm. And and how are we how do we improve the quality of the software? Yeah. And how do we translate um, you know new ideas from mm -hmm. from research papers? Into, into implementations that people can use. Perfect, perfect. Um, What's about the Cardano concept? So Charles you know, describes Cardano as being a, a third generation blockchain. Yeah. Um, can we also but, name it as but, Ethereum killer? <laughs> as some people claim, not, not really. You, you have different approaches. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe. maybe. Um, but I, I don't really have a, you know, a good opinion on that kind of thing because... Yeah. Um, you know, space I, I, I'm, not, I'm not like mm -hmm. Charles, right? Charles has been doing this kind of mm -hmm. you know, cryptocurrency building for, for years, whereas my speciality is, is as a computer scientist and mm -hmm. programmer, and my focus is on how do we build these things and build them correctly. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've got excellent um, academic cryptographers, researchers, who, mm -hmm. who produce new ideas like Ouroboros, but my job is how do we translate that into implementations that work? So, I mean, of course, I get to see, like, you know, what, what is Charles's vision of a third generation blockchain? Um, so, okay, third generation blockchain is really a marketing term. It's, it's, a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a bundle of ideas mm -hmm. for a bunch of different things. So, you know, we have to talk about what the individual things are. Um, so, in some ways, it is about doing what Ethereum does, but better, in some ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, for example, um, you, want, you want to have uh, the ability... So, apps platform... Yeah, Especially right. You want to have a, a smart contract language, platform, language but you want to, you want yes. to have mm -hmm. languages which are compatible with the Ethereum ones. But you also yeah. have to have ones that you want to have ones that are better, right? Sure. Uh, my speciality, my academic background, um, is in the design of programming languages. There's a whole academic area that studies how should programming languages be designed. Um, and if you look at Ethereum, mm -hmm. well, when I look at Ethereum and I look at languages like um, Solidity. It looks to me like the people who designed that didn't know anything about this area of academic study, mm -hmm. and that's not, you know, blaming them. Yeah. Um, but if you do know about that stuff, you can do better. You know, you can avoid all kinds of problems. So we think it's the solidity is too difficult for for the like, okay. matter of the several developers. things. Uh, Solidity is just not a well-designed language. Yeah. Um, it has all kinds of things which make it... Lots of bugs, you mean? It, it makes it easy to write programs in Solidity that have bugs. Right? Mm -hmm. Good languages make it easy for programmers to avoid bugs accidentally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. They make it easy... You know, they, the, the design of a language makes it easy to avoid the bugs rather than walking mm -hmm. into the problems. Yeah. Um, and Solidity you know, just does not benefit from that kind of... Um, history of, of, of yeah. technology um, or, or the history of thought that goes into designing programming languages. Um, so that, that's something that we are able to bring to, um, yeah, to yeah, Cardano. Yeah. We have many people uh, who, you know, their academic speciality is programming language design and we have them working on designing new languages mm -hmm. to run on, on the Cardano uh, system so that the smart contracts that we will let people write in, in these languages will be shorter, they'll be easier to understand, they'll have fewer, fewer ways of like tripping up, falling over mm -hmm. your, your feet, um, doing, so, doing things yeah. which cause... I mean, and you just have to look around. If you look at the Ethereum ecosystem, you see in the news all the time, this smart contract got hacked, that smart contract, yeah, you know, exactly. all these kinds of flaws. Some of those are to do with the programmers who wrote the contract doing things badly. But some of it can be blamed on the design of the system, which mm -hmm. made it too easy mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. bad things. Oh, really? um, and that's what you know, the language design really helps with. And also, actually, the design of the execution platform. The EVM is modeled on the JVM, 
but it, it doesn't need to be. It, it, that's too complicated. Um, you should do something that's simpler and more secure. Um, and that's one of the things that we're trying to do. So yeah. Cardano has got multiple smart contract platforms that we're developing. One is based on the EVM, um, so it, which mm -hmm. will be compatible. But we've also got a second platform, um, which is based on ideas of functional programming. Um, yeah, got it. Yeah. So something uh, more than just Ethereum virtual machine, yeah? So you have yes. something, something extra. There's no need to have a virtual machine. The whole idea of a virtual machine is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, you need a way to run the program. You don't need a virtual machine. That's just an idea that people had mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they were familiar with the JVM. Um, but it's unnecessary. You can have things which are much simpler yeah. that, that no one would even call a, a virtual machine. Uh, and that's what we're doing with Plutus. Uh, or Plutus, oh, Plutus, Plutus Core. Uh -huh. um, is a, it is an execution platform for yeah. smart contracts, but you wouldn't call it a... Uh, a virtual machine. It's much simpler than that. Um, got it, got it. So you have a great uh, university background when it comes to developing your product. Uh, do you find it as an advantage or literally uh, how, how do you find it as, as a useful tool to, to build this? Um, I, I think um, applying computer science to the design and implementation of cryptocurrencies uh, can and should have a massive benefit in terms of quality. Um, uh, I mean, I'm a big believer in open source and, you know, mm -hmm. just getting on with things and hacking. But, um, you know, for some kinds of problems where you really want to have a solution that everybody can trust, yeah. um, you need to... Some government, you need, <laughs> not, not to say. <laughs> right, right. You, that, where mm -hmm. The people that you, that you don't want to be exploitable by people mm -hmm. who, you know, want to, mm -hmm. want to destroy the system yeah. or... Uh, government might be one example, or, or criminals, or you know anyone who yeah. has a big incentive to try mm -hmm. and destroy the system. Um, you need to try and make sure that the system is designed correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not about avoiding bugs, it's about yeah. designing the system correctly and then making sure that the implementation of the system is correct with respect to its specification. And that's, that's where academic computer science really helps, um, being able to apply yeah, mathematics. Yeah, yeah. Because actually, Computer programs are mathematical things, yeah. right? Um, if you write Python mm -hmm. or C, you might never notice this. Um, but people who, you know... But it's already there. <laughs> How to say, like, the programming came from mathematics, so... Well, uh, actually, this is, this is very interesting, very, actually. Very narrow. The, the programming really comes from kind of two areas, uh, like historically, going back to the 1960s. You've got programming uh, as an engineering mm -hmm. thing. You know, people built computers and then they had to write languages to, uh, to make the computers work, uh, to write programs for the computers, and they built those languages in the style in which the computers themselves worked. Yeah. And that's the engineering kind of line of, of programming languages, and that's things like C and Python and C++ and Java. Um, and then there's this other style, which is based on mathematics. Um, it's based on um, the, uh, the lambda calculus. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it comes from this academic approach. It mm -hmm. used to be very impractical. Um, you know, 20 years ago, it was very impractical. Ten, ten years ago, mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm. now, it's, now it's fine. Um, so yeah. programs are actually mathematical things. They're mathematical objects. You can reason about programs using mathematics. You can prove that a program does what it's supposed to do using mathematics. You can't do that with C very easily. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can do it with some other languages, and Haskell is one of them. Um, yeah, all right. Or, and, and so then the idea is that you, you should specify the design of your system, of your cryptocurrency, using that kind of mathematical logic, that kind of technique, that kind of language, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then try and show that the, the program does what it's supposed to do. Um, and that, that's the, yeah, way, that's to practical that's the way to increase mm -hmm. quality. Got it, yeah. got it. Yeah. There's like never-ending debate in the crypto sphere about which cryptocurrency mm -hmm. is the best. Why should, <laughs> why should investors, the users, care about the Cardano? What's, what's very unique about this product? So, so I, I make a point of never giving investment <laughs> advice. Yeah. Um, but um, why, why am I interested in... Why, you know, personally for me, as a, as a you know, computer scientist and a professional programmer, uh, Why should I see also it, choose over <laughs> choose the Cardano over Ethereum? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know, but let me tell you why I yeah. like Cardano. What, yeah. what I think is good about it, which is that um, 
the, the, the people who are building it take uh, doing it right seriously. Um, and not very many companies do, actually. I have been running, you know, I've been doing commercial consulting for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And actually, IOHK is the first, first, maybe second, company that, that uh, I have helped mm -hmm. that actually takes um, the correctness properly mm -hmm. seriously. Enough to employ mm -hmm. the kind of computer science techniques that people do study at university, mm -hmm. but typically are not used in industry. Um, because people think it's too expensive. Or, um, but cryptocurrencies are the obvious application. You yeah. know, where else do you have people who believe that there's massive amounts of money at stake? You should use the proper techniques to, to, uh, to do it correctly. Otherwise, you know, eventually they'll collapse. You know, someone will find a bug somewhere mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. system will collapse. Um, so, yeah, yeah the, the, because of the philosophy is that they're trying to do it properly, that, that's what's actually very attractive. I mean, they're not there yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, you know, Cardano is not high assurance. Mm -hmm. It's not yet. Yeah. But, it's in, in a very but that's stage. the direction mm -hmm. that they're going in. And they sure. take that seriously. And so, you know, I think if you want to believe that something is going to be infrastructure for the long mm -hmm. run, you know, for the next 20 years, um, then you need to believe that these things are going to be stuff that is going to be around for that long and not fail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that, in my view, is to do it properly, and sure. that means using proper computer science. How do you find, when could you buy the cup of tea for Cardano <laughs> tokens? <laughs> uh, how I do you know. produce? I don't know. I mean, that, that's not my area. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the people making... Do you think the volatility of cryptocurrency is the, something that stops them from massive adoption? Do I think what? Uh, the volatility. The volatility, oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, I think there's for lots me. of problems in cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. with the, the economics. I think, I think more... Um, I think more research needs to be mm -hmm. done on the macroeconomics of yeah. cryptocurrencies. Uh, people need to think harder about how do you do the kinds of things that central banks do, mm -hmm. but do it in a decentralized way. There is a reason that we have central banks, yes. right? I mean, I know people are very keen on having no inflation, um, but you know, if you look at Bitcoin, it's got massive monetary expansion going on. Um, exactly. But has anyone ever studied the, the macroeconomics of these systems? What, what, sure. is, what is going to make them stable in the long term? Um, from, the, from the economic point of view. People need to research that. Yeah. Um, if everybody believes something is an investment, that's not going to work. That can't be absolutely, a currency. Absolutely. You can't have a currency that everybody thinks is an investment. It will always stay the digital gold, yeah, isn't it? And not, not like the medium but, of but, but, Right, but digital gold mm -hmm. at least has value because people are prepared to exchange it mm -hmm. for goods and services. Um, for, something to have, for a currency to have value in the end, there needs to be a market of goods and services that are exchanged in mm -hmm. that currency. Um, yeah. And so if, if, if you've got a new ICO um, that people only believe is an investment and not a currency, mm -hmm. then it can't even be an investment because it can never sure. become something that... Yeah, so I think, I think the way to distinguish mm -hmm. like a, a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid <laughs> scheme um, and, and one that will really work is, is there a plan for... Is there a credible plan for... The, the currency being used, right? Who is going to use it? Yeah. For what? When? Why? Exactly. Um, so some of the utility tokens, you know, they have an answer to that, right? They say Probably. it's used for this service, specifically this service. Um, for the general purpose currencies, they have to say, they have to have a credible plan for why that is. You know, Cardano says, you know, initially there'll be um, like online gambling is a, is a service uh, that, that people would use it for, mm -hmm. and there may be others later. But for each of these kinds of systems, you have to, have to be able to explain why will it eventually be a currency, which means you know, goods and services in that currency. Got it, got it. Yeah. What's the main product you focus on to like, make, make very useful uh, and uh, available to, to use by the users? So by, that, that, that's an easy, an easy question because I don't focus on products at ah, all. Really? I just, just do the technology. <laughs> got it, got it, got um, it. To, to the extent that we look at that, it's in how do we design the smart contract languages? Mm -hmm. Because when we're designing the smart contract languages, we do have to think about um, what are people going to use it for? Um, so that actually brings up a very interesting um, language that we are building. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the Plutus platform, we have got two languages. One is, one is called Plutus, and the other is a language called Marlow. And the Marlow language is actually a, um, a domain-specific language for financial contracts. 
So a domain-specific language means that for a particular kind of problem, a particular domain, um, you have a language which is designed specially for expressing solutions mm -hmm. to problems in that domain. And those programs can then be much shorter and simpler and easier to understand. So for a financial contract, a, a Marlowe program and a Plutus program would be very different. I mean, the Plutus program would be very large, well, comparatively large. The, the, the Marlowe program would be really short. You could express, you can express uh, like a future or an option uh, in Marlowe in two lines of code because it's designed for financial contracts. You can't express, you know, poker in Marlowe. That's not what it's for. Yeah. Yeah. You can express any kind of financial contract, um, pretty much any kind of financial contract. And that means that, so that, that's an example of an application area, um, you know, uh, financial contracts in, in different kinds of currencies mm -hmm. or different kinds of goods or tokens. Because once, once you've got multiple kind of assets on the same blockchain, like Ethereum does and Cardano will do, um, you can then have, you know, contracts, financial contracts for trading those things against each other. You could give out futures or options. Those are simple yeah. examples, futures and options. But you can have almost arbitrarily complex um, uh, financial contracts using uh, the tokens available on the, uh, on the system. And they can depend on um, certain aspects of the real mm -hmm. world. So, so long as these observables are visible on the chain, um, like, like some of the Ethereum's oracles is an example then you can have contracts that depend on, uh, depend on events that happen in the real world. Uh, and and the really yeah. nice thing is they're really short. They're really simple, really short programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A non-expert, you know, non-programmer can write these programs. You can have yeah, a business very, analyst very important write those programs. To make it, not to and make it and the, you can't make stupid mistakes like that, that would cause it to collapse because the range of things that you can say is much simpler. Um, it, it, yeah, so for, for certain kinds of problems, these, these DSLs, uh, make a really nice solution. Perfect. Uh, and, yeah. It's perfect. Awesome. All right. So I wish you best luck with Cardano. Thank you. Um, great, uh, like scalability, efficiency, and massive adoption. Thank you very much for giving us the time. Uh, and thank you very uh, much. Wish you all the best. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. All right, guys. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, remember to smash the likes and comment <laughs> under the under the video. Tell us what you think about this. And uh, see you later.